there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Sergeant, but I don't need an escort. This is, this is dangerous country, Miss Shelby. You saw what Quantrill's girls did back there at Sawyer's less than a week ago. Did Quantrill do that? And how do you know my name? Everybody in this part of Missouri knows Miss Jean Shelby. By sight, anyway. I'm Sergeant James of Major Barker's command at Newton. He knows me, too. Well, if you know anything about me, you know I always ride alone. And when I do want an escort, there won't be any Yankees in it. But you were going somewhere, Sergeant. You mustn't sacrifice duty for my sake. But we're not. This is our duty. Oh, you mean looking for girls foolish enough to think they're safe on these roads? Just to look out for Jean Shelby. Just what does that mean? Major Barker's expecting you this afternoon. He sent us out to make sure you reach Newton safely. Does that mean I'm a prisoner? I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We just have to make sure that you don't miss calling on the Major. You say he's expecting me today? Why? I don't know. Maybe you could tell me. Or maybe this is Ladies' Day at headquarters. Well, if I must be a lady... <laughs> Especially the finish. Well, shall we go? On second thought, I do want to see Major Barker. And tell him just what I think of him. I'm certain the Major will be interested. He's at headquarters waiting for you now. Me, Big Chief White Cloud. I know who you are. Last night when the guard picked you up drunk, you raved that you knew something about Bob Shelby. Now that you slept it off, do you still know anything? Me know where get Bob Shelby. Kill him. Where? You pay? I always pay. How much? Ten dollar to tell. Hunt them all like you promised if get Bob Shelby. All right. Here's your ten. Now where is he? His father's place, Fontana, 
shot, wounded. Him come home two night ago. Brown? Yes, sir. Call for Brown, take a squad of men and go to Fontana. Bring back Bob Shelby. He's at the Shelby home. Right, sir. And one more thing. I've just paid this Indian $10 for information. Take him along with you. If he's lied, hang him. You go ahead, White Cloud. It's either $100 or the rope for you. That's all, Corporal. Yes, sir. I thought you paid $50 a head for Quantrill's men. Why are you paying $100 for this Bob Shelby? Because he's worth twice as much as any man except Quantrill himself. When I get a hold of him, I'll break up a combination that makes Quantrill so successful. Combination? Yes. You see, Bob and his sister Jean work together, and they're a very dangerous pair. Jean makes men talk, and somehow or other gets the information to Bob. They make Quantrill the power he is. Why didn't you arrest this girl long ago? <laughs> we know she does these things, but we can't catch her at it. What makes you think this Indian isn't lying? Because his one ambition is to wipe out the Shelby family. Years ago, he tried to kidnap Shelby's wife. After that, the Cherokees threw him out. And he's been a murderous renegade ever since. But always aiming at the Shelby. Believe me, Miss Shelby, I'm almost sorry we're here. For me, this has been a very enjoyable duty. And you've been very kind, Sergeant. In fact, you've made this so pleasant that perhaps someday we... Well, that's what I didn't dare hope for. It might even be someday soon, if you wish. If we could meet somewhere. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. Well, if it isn't little Jean. Where did you find her, Sergeant? Just this side of the Sawyer place. Back to the scene of the crime, eh? Well, that's quite natural. You can leave her here, Sergeant. Goodbye for now, Sergeant. Thank you again for your kindness. The pleasure, Miss Shelby. I only hope... Just a minute, Sergeant. Before you get any ideas about this young lady, just remember that many people have been killed and a lot of homes burned in Missouri because she was able to make fools out of men like you. He's always hated me, Sergeant. And another thing, Sergeant. If I hear of you having anything to do with her except as her jailer... I'll have you court-martialed as a traitor. Now, get out. Now, what's this all about? I'm sorry, Jean. It's bad news for you. You're going to be our guest for a time. Maybe a long, long time. Hey. This just came in, sir. Urgent. Thank you. Captain Raymond. Changes my plans. Oh, God. Yes, sir. Why does he have to be a Yankee? Keep an eye on Miss Shelby. Yes, sir. Changing orders? Yes, sir. I've been ordered to leave immediately. How are the roads on the way to Roller? All clear except for Quantrill's men. I'll take that chance. I'm sorry I won't be here when White Cloud and the boys get back. It'd be interesting to know if young Shelby is caught napping. Well, this time his sister won't warn him. He's right in here. Come on in. I'd like to meet the girl who's fooled you so long. Sarge? What's the matter? Get back. Throw your guns over there. Get a patrol and chase her. Yes, sir. catch her with that horse. It's mine, and I know. Especially with such a rider. You sound as though you're glad. I'm beginning to think that I am. Mother, Dad! What's the matter? Yankees have found out that Bob's hiding here. They're after him. We'll have to get him away. How'd they find out? White Cloud. You get him ready now. Saddle fresh horses. You really shouldn't be going. You're not 
strong enough. Oh, don't worry about me, Mom. I'll be all right. I'll get him through. Good luck, son. Bye, Dad. son Bob is here, so we've come for him. You're mistaken. Bob hasn't been home for months. That ma'am will have to find out for ourselves. All right, men, search the place, every inch of it. No sign of him, sir. Where's that Indian? I, uh, I don't know, sir. You let him get away. All right, men, we'll find that Indian, and when we do, we'll hang him. Let's go. Raymond's horse. She got here. They go contrail. Me find them. Bob! I can't go on, Jean. Bob, we can't stop now. It's only three miles more. We'll take it easy. I can't get back into the saddle. You ride ahead to Quantrell's camp and get a wagon. I can't leave you alone. We can wait here all night. I'll stand guard. You're a swell soldier, sis, but I'll never make it except in a wagon. You go on ahead. I'll be all right till you get back. Shelby, Miss Jean Shelby, or am I wrong? You're right, Captain Raymond. Good, that saves introductions. I've been wanting to meet you. What are you doing here? This isn't the road to Rolla. I know, I had a bit of trouble getting away from some of Quantrill's men. Well, you can't go down this trail. Why not? Unless you want to take me to Quantrill as your prisoner. I should, you're a Yankee officer. But you're not sure. That's good. Thank you, Miss Shelby.
I'd hoped you'd get him away safely. You hope that? Yes. I'm only sorry there's nothing we can do for him now. I can take him home. Quantrell. Quantrell. Gee, what's happened? Bob. Gene, I know what he meant to you. You know what he meant to me. As young as he was, with your help, he was my right arm. I don't know what either of us will do without him. Who did it? This Yankee? No, it was White Cloud. I was trying to get Bob to camp. He couldn't ride any farther. I was going to you for help when we heard the shot. We? I had just captured the Shanky captain. I forced him to come back here with me. Boys, Bob Shelby's been killed. I promise you, Jean, and I promise you that we'll pay off for his murder, and we'll begin by paying off right now. Any last words before we hang you? Yes, I'm a prisoner of war. I don't take any prisoners. My best captain has just been murdered, and it's a captain for a captain. Get the rope. No, Bill. Why not? He's mine. Sure. You captured him. That makes it better. We take over from here. String him up, boys. Bill, if you lay a finger on this Yankee captain or make one more move to hang him, I'll kill you. Have you gone crazy? No. Bob and I did a lot for you. Do you think you owe us anything for that? Sure. Sure. Yeah, more than I can ever repay. And I've never asked you for anything. So I don't think it's too much of a favor to ask you to turn this Yankee over to me. He belongs to me. I captured him. What are you going to do with him? I'm settling my own account for Bob, and I don't need any help, so keep your hands off. An Indian killed my brother. I know how to handle this, Captain. If you doubt it, look for his body about ten miles down the trail. Is that clear? Jean, I've misjudged you. Oh, I should have known better. Boys? Turn him over to Miss Shelby. Thanks, Bill. Look, Jean, honey, I don't like you hitting the trail alone. I'd better go with you. No, Jerry, this is my job. I don't need any help. But something might happen. Nothing's going to happen to anybody but this Yankee here. Let her alone, Jerry. What Jean wants goes. I want something from you, Bob. From me? One of your knives. One of my knives? Well, if you're going to hear, you better take the sharp one. Thanks, Bob. Boost him on a horse, just as he is. Put Bob on horse. Bill, I want your word that nobody will follow me down the trail until tomorrow. Jean, you have my word, and you know I never break it. Thanks. This is far enough. We've come ten miles. Half a mile down the trail, you'll hit a narrow back road. Turn left on it. Go ahead five miles and let the main road to roll up. You might need this. What are you going to do, Miss Shelby? 
take Bob home. Now, tonight? Yes. Well, then you'll need this. I'll be all right. I know this country. You haven't a chance with that Indian on the loose. Why are you doing this, Miss Shelby? I don't know. A while ago, you saved my life. I can't understand why. Except that you're the kind of person I thought you would be. Do you think for one minute I'd let you go back to Fontana alone tonight? But you've been ordered to roll in a hurry. It's because of you I have a chance to get there. So it can wait a few hours. You get some sleep, and I'll stand guard. We'll you... take your brother back to Fontana later tonight. You would do that? You see? You're so tired you can hardly sit up. I've always hated all Yankees before. Bob and I did everything we could against them. We always worked together. Mother and Dad never did understand how we felt about it. I guess helping Quantrill wasn't the right way. It was the only way we had. Now, I don't know. Everything I felt about the war seems to have died when Bob was killed. All I am now is heartbroken and lonely. I understand. No, you can't. You don't know what I've done in this war. I've been an outlaw. I've fought, I've lied and cheated. I've made men like me when I hated them just so they would talk. Yes, I was almost willing to do anything to help us fight the Yankees. And I did. Why are you telling me this, Jean? When I ran away on your horse, I didn't know if I'd ever see you again. I hoped I would. Why? You don't know? Maybe. But right now, you're a pretty tired girl. You've got to get some sleep. I feel safe here with you. You are. I always knew it would happen to me in one second. And that I would know when I do. I don't think I was meant for happiness. And this may not bring me any except the moments like this. Me White Cloud. Me Cherokee Chief. Me Kittle Bob Shelby. <laughs> White Cloud will kill all Shelby. Soldiers come last night. They think nobody come tonight. White Cloud come. We take tavern. You take what you want. Who go with White Cloud? We go now! Of course it wasn't. Jean, we've got to hurry. Where's your home? Boston. Back Bay? I'm afraid so. In Harvard, of course. Yes, I'll have to admit it. And you don't mind the way I've been helping Quantrell? I have no right to, Jean. No right? Someone else, isn't it? A girl back in Boston, isn't it? Please, Jean. Someone you're engaged to, is that it? I suppose so, but... And you're going to marry her. You can't. We belong to each other. Jean, you must listen to me. 
white cloud. Father and I will see to that, Doctor. If she does recover, it'll take a long time. Doctor, when will you know? I wouldn't dare to guess. We can only hope. There's a room for you here, Captain Raymond, if you can stay. I'd like to, but I'm still under orders. I'll get in touch with you as often as I can. You won't let her slip away, will you? I'll do my best. Thank you. You'll take care of her brother's body, won't you? Of course. Goodbye. Goodbye. again. It was not quite as much of me, but it's time I came to life. It's almost summer again. It's been a long time, Mary. Too long. No. Now you're well. I told you all along I had to get well. I had to. There hasn't been any word from anybody. Outside of Fontana asking about me? No. Just Jerry Long. I wasn't thinking about Jerry. You haven't said anything about it, Jean. You haven't spoken much at all since you were hurt. But it's that Captain Raymond you're thinking about, isn't it? Yes. Don't ask me why. I don't know. He's a Yankee. But it didn't seem to make any difference. It just happened. Blame you? I could have... Yankee or no Yankee, I liked him. I never sent a word. No. But that morning he brought you here, I've never seen anyone so worried or anxious. And he forgot me as soon as I was out of sight. Well, I can hate him as much as I love him. No. I had to know. And now that I'm sure, I don't want to say any more about it. It's gone. Like everything and everybody else I ever cared for. Keep your chin up, honey. It is.
you were gone. I just wanted to see if I could still shoot. I can. But not here. Please. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not very thoughtful. But you know I have a job to do. I know. That Indian. But you mustn't. It's the one thing I have to do. Oh, Jean, it hurts to see you just hating. What else is there for me now? But you can't give the rest of your life just to hate and revenge. Revenge? Oh, not exactly, Mary. White Cloud swore he'd wipe out the Shelbys. He killed my mother, father, and brother. And did his best to kill me. I know you're not safe as long as he's still alive and free. So I'm going to get him first. But it's, please, give it up. I can't. My life doesn't mean much to me, but I'm not going to let White Cloud end it. Hi there! The door was open. The back door, we don't use front doors. So we came right in. Hello, Bob. Jerry. Hello, I'm Bob Crandall. I thought so. You did? <laughs> well, I guess you'll be pretty safe with these two. I'll see you later. You sure will. Gosh, it's good to see you, honey. Yeah, up and around and everything, we sure missed you. Well, I'm all right. Why, Bob, you look half undressed without your knives and bandoliers. Oh, shucks. It's getting too hot to wear them. In more ways than one. But I suppose you want your knife back. Knife? Uh, what knife? Oh, no. War being over and Bill Quantrill dead, knife ain't no use except for Whitland, and I never was much for Whitland. Don't act tough with me, Bob. I know you never used a knife for anything else. Well, I never was much for killing either. Bothered me all during the war, me being such a dead shot. Every time I fired a gun, I was scared I'd hit somebody. <laughs> He's plenty tough in a fight. Oh, a fight. Well, a fight's different. You know, in a fight, you gotta fight. And now there's nothing to fight? Oh, I wouldn't exactly say that. Maybe there is, and then again, maybe... Look, uh... Bob, there are a few things I'd like to talk over with Gene, and... Well, it's been swell seeing you. You know, it's been like a sunrise. It's been like filling in a royal flush, like landing a fish that long. Why, Bob, what a lot of women you must have been practicing on to say such pretty things like that. Shucks, no, I've been practicing on my horse every oh, morning. Oh, you mean he likes it? Well, he's getting a swell head. Well, I promise I won't let that happen to me. But thanks, Bob. It's sure gonna be lonesome. But maybe, well, anyhow, here's hoping. Good luck, Jerry. Guys, honey, you look wonderful. You two shouldn't have come here. Even if the war is over, there's still a price on Quantrill's men. It was worth taking a chance. Aren't you glad I came? I'm glad you both came. Won't you sit down? What's on your mind, Jerry? Lots of things. You know, the gang's broken up. When Bill was killed in that barn, only a dozen or so got away. So I heard. What about it? Most of Quantrill's men were left scattered. But not all of them. Six of us are sticking together up in the hills. What are you going to do? Keep right on going like we did. You can't. The war's over. We can't help that. Outlaws. We don't call it that. We got a lot of scores to settle with the Yankees. We got a right to hate. And we got quite a list. So we're going to settle them and make it pay us at the same time. And get killed your first time out. Not the way we got to take it. It's what I came to see you about. Look, Jean, things never went right after we lost you and Bob. Especially you. We want you to join up with us right away. Me? Well, you must be out of your mind. Oh, no, I'm not. With you scouting for us, we're a cinch, and you get a chance to get even and to get rich. That would be pretty, wouldn't it? One girl and six men. We got that figured out, too. Honey, you know I've always been crazy about you, and Bob always wanted it that way. I'm asking you to marry me, honey, right away. I guess that's a compliment, Jerry, but I don't love you. And whatever gave you the idea, I'd marry an outlaw. Outlaw? What else can we be? You said yourself there's a price on every Quantrill man, and on everybody else that helped Quantrill, too. What do you mean by that? I mean that you're in the same boat that we are, and if you didn't know it, it's time somebody told you. Look, Jean, why do you suppose that the Mansons never let you out of the house, never let anybody see you? The Yankees are running everything around here now, and they're after everybody that had anything to do with Quantrill. So that was why she didn't want me to... Who's in your gang, Jerry? See, there's Crandall, Miller, Rockley, Hudson, and Joe Barnes. They're all right in their own way. 
What do you mean with that? Is White Cloud on your payoff list? He is if we can ever catch up with him. If I go with you and help you out on other jobs, will you put him on top of your list? Oh, we sure will, honey. We'll do anything that you want. Oh, honey, with you and me married. Married? Why, sure. I don't want to marry you, Jerry. Well, you'll have to. You said Let yourself. Let me settle that, Jerry. If I go with you. Why don't we start right away? There's nothing to hold you back, is there? Where's your hideout? About three miles up from Rocky Ford. If I decide to do it, I'll be at the Ford late this afternoon. If I'm not there by sundown, I'm not coming. That's okay. You'll be there. Oh, honey. You're so pretty. It's gonna be swell, you and me. No, Jerry. You better go. Okay, honey. See you later. Manson, it seems like years. Almost is. Jean here? Yes, she is. And very much provoked with you for waiting so long. I've been trying to get back here for a long time. Oh, I think she'll forgive you. She was asking about you just a short while ago. Come in, won't you? Thanks. to go like this, but you've risked too much for me already. And this is the only way. Please try to forgive me. Love, Jean. Where could she have gone? I guess only Jean knows that. She always has gone her way alone. She means a lot to you, doesn't she, Captain Raymond? Yes, she does. I wish she had known that. Go and find her. Please, you must, for her sake, as well as yours. I'll find her. Well, I guess I'll be going. Good luck, Captain. I told you I'd bring her back with me. Good boy. I told you I'd bring her back with me. Just a moment, all of you. Let's get everything straight before we start. I know Jerry told you the only reason I'm here is because I want to get White Cloud. I need your help, and I'm willing to pay for it. If you'll put White Cloud on top of your list, I'll scout for you and do everything else I can whenever you're out to settle a score with a Yankee. I'm the only girl in this gang, so let's get straight on that, too. Bob wants me to marry him and have that settled. But I'm not interested in marrying anyone right now. White Cloud killed my family and gave me that. And until it's paid for, there's nothing else on my mind. In the last year or so, nearly every one of you has asked me to marry him. If you still feel that way, I'm ready to make a deal with you. When White Cloud is dead, the man who does the most to make him that way will be the one. Until then, just remember, I've always been straight. And I'm gonna stay that way. Now, if you don't like my terms, I'll be on my way alone. Is it a deal? Sure. It is. No, it's no. That isn't what you agreed. I didn't agree to anything with you, Jerry. Still, your chances ought to be better than the rest if you're running this game. Better take them. Oh, one more thing. If you want me to do you any good, keep it a secret that I'm with you. So let's forget the name of Jean Shelby. From now on with this gang, my name is Marie Carroll. Remember that. Well, here it is, honey. I hope it's comfortable enough for you. It's fine, Jerry. Thanks. Good night. Wait a minute, Jean. You didn't have to say all that this afternoon to get the fellas to help you. I'm running this outfit. You marry me and they'll do what we want them to. They don't belong in this. You and me, why, 
We're the same kind of people. Together we can get anything that we want. We're sure to get married sometime, so why don't we do it tomorrow instead of stalling around? I guess you don't hear very well, Jerry. I meant every word I said. I don't belong to you. And you have exactly the same chance as everybody else. Not a bit more. I won't take that. Good time. Came in to haul out the garbage. Well, nighty night, Jean. I mean, Marie. Planning of Jean in her role of Marie Carroll, the outlaw band launched upon a meteoric career. It would appear from nowhere, strike, and then vanish until it struck again, far away. Through it all, Jean's brooding unhappiness only increased. Every day she found herself more deeply involved in the outlawry she hated. But she could not bring herself to give it up and turn back from her obsession for revenge on White Cloud. And while she drove relentlessly toward this goal, White Cloud and his own band of renegades set the border ablaze with murderous raids, always escaping to burn and kill again. She'll be along. Where are the boys? Out checking on a spot we're going to raid. Why, what's all the excitement? I found out. I know where we can get White Cloud. Where? He's gone to Tom Starr's hideout. Yeah, but that's over in the territory. I know it. But we can make it in two or three days if we ride hard. We can start right now. Now, look, honey. We've passed up a lot of things lately just to chase this Indian. And besides, Joe and Ted have spotted a place today where the pickings are good. We can take them easy. Do you mean you'd stop for anything? When we have White Cloud in our hands? He isn't going to run away overnight. Joe and Ted are always finding something or doing something to jump the traces and get us all killed. We're going to head for the territory right now. If you don't want to go, I'll go alone. Now, wait a minute, honey. That's the way you feel about it. We'll head for Tom Stars as soon as the boys get back. Now you're talking, Jerry. Let's saddle up. Good evening, Miss Carroll. I suppose you're Jerry Long. And I'm Bob Crandall. You know us? Oh, I know about you. Anyway, I'm good at guessing. What can I do for you? We're trying to find White Cloud. We heard he was coming here. Are you friends of White Cloud? Friends? Well, White Cloud was here. I drove him off. No Cherokee will give shelter to him or any of his band. 
Then you don't know where he is or how we can find him? What do you want with him? How much do you know about White Cloud? Everything, I guess. And my real name is Jean Shelby. Oh, I see. I think I can help you. White Cloud is going back to Arkansas. He started this morning. He should be over the line near Sandville in about two days. He doesn't plan to raid until he gets near Gilmore. If we shortcut and ride hard, we can get back to our eye out 24 hours ahead of him. This time he won't get away. For the first time, we know exactly where to find White Cloud. Jean. What's wrong, Bob? Everything. Look, Jean, you sure you want to go through with this white cloud business? Getting cold feet? Who, me? I never catch cold any place, especially in my feet. Then what? Well, it's like this. Up to now, you've been so wrapped up, you ain't been noticing things. Things ain't so good. Uh, with the boys, I mean. In what way? I ain't speaking for myself. I'll go the limit for you and then some. But the boys have been talking a lot and it's getting worse. They just don't like the setup and they're getting kind of edgy. But why now when we're right at the finish? Well, that's the trouble. Up to now, that white cloud business has been something that's been way off. Something that they've just talked about. Now we're right up against it and it's going to be tough and... Well, we just don't like it. What's the matter? Isn't the prize good enough? Gosh, it's too good. That's just the trouble. They all want to marry, and they know only one can win. What are you trying to say, Bob? That it's been brewing for a long time. And if you can think of anything to prevent a blow-up, you better have it handy right from now on. What about you, Bob? I never did like this setup. About you, I mean. You had no business to make a promise to marry one of us. Why, we're just a bunch of toughs, outlaws. What am I? You're something pretty special. You're just too swell for any of us. You're so swell, I wouldn't marry you even if I did win. That's how much I think of you. Thanks, Bob. I know you hate this whole business of being a road agent. You don't belong in it. You belong in a nice house, wearing nice clothes, with a nice husband, bringing up nice children. And none of them should look like anybody in this gang. There was another man, wasn't there? Yes, but that was long ago. Jean, there's something I want you to do for me right now before the others get back, or it'll be too late. What is it? Well, when we were at Stars, I bought something. You mean that bundle you've been carrying on your saddle? Can I show it to you? Of course. I saw it at the store the first day, and I kept thinking of you in it. You, you belonged in it, Jean. Would you, would you put it on and wear it for me so I could just see you once in it? Well, if you go outside and give me a few minutes. Put it away quick, maybe tomorrow. Wait a minute, Bob. Don't let anybody tell them I'm asleep. Tell them anything. I've got to think. And I won't be out until they're all back. And thanks for more than I can say. Jean in there? He's asleep. Oh, well, we bust our backs for her show, huh? Shut up. What'd you find out? I'll tell her when she wakes up. Hmm. Should I anything? Uh -huh. Well, we did. White Cloud and his men are on their way into this country. Oh, so we can all be killed, huh? Yeah, so Jerry can have Jean. That's not true. I got as good a chance as any of you. Ah, stop fooling yourself, Crandall. You know she's just giving us a song and dance. 
Take it easy now, will you? Take it easy. What it amounts to is this. White Cloud broke loose last night. And from what we know, he'll strike near here tomorrow night. We ought to be glad to do this for Jean, even without the other deal. She's taken plenty of chances for us. I'm with Bob on that. She got paid plenty for the chances she took with us. On this deal with Jean, we got one chance in six. But with the Redskins, it's a five to one chance. We'll all get our gizzards cut out. I'm with you on that. Me too. Here comes Jerry. Where's Jean? She's in there asleep. Asleep? Well, this'll wake her up. It's all off, boys. There'll be no white cloud chasing. What do you mean by that? The whole country over there is full of Yankees cavalry. They're here for two things, to stop White Cloud and to wipe us out. We can run now or lay low until they're gone. I'll tell... It won't be necessary, Jerry. I heard you. That dress. Where did you get that dress? It's all right, Jerry. I wanted to come to you like this just once before we start. Because I'm going to be right in the middle of it with you when we get White Cloud. Take the same chance as you do. But we're not going to take any. We don't have to. We'll wait until the right time to strike so we can all come back. I'll keep my promise and I have no favors. Is that good enough? It's too good. Not for me, it ain't. Those troopers. We can't beat those troopers. They'll grab us. But we know where to go. The troopers don't. They'll never catch us. This is our chance. We have to take it. No, we're not taking any chances. The whole deal is off and I'm taking Gene with me. Get to your horse, Gene. I'll keep him covered. Put it away, Jerry. Does that show you where I stand? I don't trust Jerry and I don't trust her. I don't trust you about Jean or anything. We're gonna lay low. She stays here too. You fools. What Jean says goes. And we hit the trail with her. That goes for me too. Not for me. Nor me. Jean stays here. It's every man for himself. Get back, you rats! So, honey, I said you were going away with me. Come on, no use waiting around here. Don't reach for it. Unbuckle your belt and drop it. Get on your horse. I'll count ten and start shooting. One, two.
who are you? That's my business. What are you doing here? Resting. Where'd you come from? Back there. And I suppose you're going up there. Right. Are you going to account for yourself? Not to you. Maybe the captain can coax you. Have it your own way. I think we better take these along, too. Corporal Brown reporting his prisoner, sir. We picked her up out on the Fairmount Road. She wouldn't account for herself. We think she might be Marie Carroll. Marie Carroll? Yes, sir. No, Corporal, you brought me a better prize. Can I leave her here? Yes, sir. Jean. How are you, Captain Raymond? Jean. And how is Mrs. Raymond? What Mrs. Raymond? Your wife, of course, the girl back in Boston. There isn't a Mrs. Raymond. There never was. When I first met you, I knew there never could be anyone else but you. And you forgot me as soon as I was out of sight. I didn't forget you. I've been trying to find you ever since I left you at the Mansons. I was captured. One of Quantrill's men, a Jerry Long, visited the prison camp. I gave him all the money I had, and he promised to get a letter to you. Jerry? Yes. I never got it. I sent you five letters. I guess Jerry saw to it that I didn't get them after he read the first one. I guess so. Even after the war was over, I, I knew you'd still be looking for White Cloud. And I hoped that somewhere I'd find a trace of you. And here you are. Don't ever let me go again. I've loved you for so long. Don't ever let me go. Don't worry, I won't. If only it isn't too late. If there's still a chance for me. Oh, it's never too late for us, Jean. We're getting married today, as soon as possible. You're going to be Mrs. Raymond. Mrs. Raymond? It's the only name I ever wanted. If I could only be sure. You love me? Love you. Does that tell you? Almost. Jean, after we get White Cloud, I'll still be involved with another woman. Another woman? Yes, a Marie Carroll. She heads a band of outlaws. From what we found out about her, she's pretty hard and vicious. Maybe she isn't as bad as it sounds. How could she be anything else? And you have to capture her? Yes. What will you do with her? She'll stand trial. And then? Probably get life. And there's no way out for her? No. But let's not talk about that. We have wedding plans to make. Remember? Yes, I remember. changing your mind, are I could never change my mind about that. Only there's one thing that... What is it? I don't want to leave you for a moment. But I've been living with friends at Glenwood, and everything I have is there, and... Well, I can't get married in this, and I, I must go see them and explain. I understand. I don't like the idea. I'll be safe. Your men are patrolling the roads. Or am I a prisoner? For life, I hope. But you will need safe conduct. Here, this pass will get you through. Gene, I'll saddle the horse for you. up on suspicion, sir. You had a right to. Leave him here. I want to talk to him. Well, Long, what are you doing around here? Suppose you try and find out. There's a personal matter I want to discuss with you. You didn't deliver those letters to Gene Shelby, did you? 
Finally found that out, huh? Yes. Jean told me. Jean? She was here a while ago. I just wanted you to know your rotten scheme didn't work. Jean and I are getting married. Married? I don't think you'll marry Jean Shelby. But you might want to make a deal to save her neck. Talking won't save you, Jerry. Not so sure. Look, where do you think she's been for the last six months? She's Marie Carroll, the outlaw, and she's been with us all the time that you've had orders to bring her in dead or alive. You're a liar. Yeah? Well, then ask her about the deal that she made, promising to marry the one who would help her get White Cloud, keeping us off, and all the time mooning over a dirty Yankee. Oh, I wasn't fooled, but I didn't care, because I knew I'd get her when we got White Cloud, and you'll never get her because White Cloud will. We knew he was going to hit at Gilmore today. Gilmore? Yeah, Gilmore. I told you she's been with us all the time, where she belongs. Jean said Glenwood. Sergeant Dale. Take the prisoner to the guardhouse. He'll stand trial. I'm taking a platoon to Gilmore. Yes, sir. My fault. I ordered them to fire. I'm glad it was you. It's better this way. I would have wrecked your life. No, you wouldn't. Not ever. And Marie Carroll. I know. And it doesn't matter. You could love me anyway. An outlaw. I love Jean Shelby. And I always will. Hold me tighter. Jean, you fought back once when you wanted to get White Cloud. Fight back again for us now. Oh, it's too late. I took the wrong road. I should have trusted your love. It was the only thing I ever wanted. 